tell me what is in your heart. I'm willing to tell you what's in my heart. Uh, I want to hear your heart and how can we uh, solve the problem. So we raise up, you know, we try to guide the other person to think, okay? So now we continue teaching uh, related to dating. Now it has been, uh, now I will send this to you after the session and then you can see this. Now if anyone is in a, in not in a group, please add them and then, uh, and then so everyone can receive this. And then if you cannot read it, you can download uh, online office uh, from the Play Store and then I will make it PDF so it's easier for everyone to read. It is uh, not as uh, it's not as large. The file is not as large. There should be training on managing negative thinking and emotions. Uh, so it's very important for people who date to learn to manage their emotions. Now, very often when people date, they have negative emotions. Uh, that we see this a lot. For instance. This is a guy and a girl, and the guy doesn't talk, and the girl would get frustrated. Or uh, the guy doesn't see her, doesn't call her up, and then she's angry. And then and the guy doesn't want know what to do, and he did something wrong yesterday, and uh, he feels very unhappy. Uh, and then the girl walks away, and then he, he, he gets disappointed and he worries about the relationship so very often uh, very often because the girls usually treasure the relationship more and then when the guy doesn't respond well then the girl has a tendency to be emotional and this will make it hard for the guy so it's both persons the guy have to communicate and tell the girl what is in his mind what he wants and and ask the girl to express herself more to him and ask the, the, guy, uh, the girl to tell him how to relate to her instead of using emotions uh, now in even in movies you can see that in dating they get very emotional uh, because one person doesn't do what the other person wants so they need to train to manage their negative thinking emotions and negative thinking emotions destroy our life and our relationship and positive thinking and emotions are very important for marriage so even when situation is difficult we still choose positive thinking from the bible so we still use want to say positive words we want to we want to um, say things that makes the other person feel happy so these are things we can say. God loves us all the time. God treasures our life. God will help us to solve our problems. It does not matter when someone restricts us. We don't have to take the words and actions seriously because God will bless us when we treat people with love. We can choose to appreciate God to keep, keep ourselves joyful. We want to thank God and then we can be joyful. We can choose not to eat the garbage from other people. So when someone says something negatively, we don't have to take it. So we need to learn to build up positive thinking and emotions. Even when things don't go right, it's okay. Uh, we can manage it step by step. We can manage the problem. We can say positive words. Even when the other person is unhappy, we can say, okay, um, uh, I'm sorry if I make you feel unhappy you can tell me what you want me to do what did I do wrong please tell me now very often in dating girls don't want to tell the guy what you did wrong because she thinks you should understand me but that's the difference between female male and female because it's hard for a man to understand a woman it's hard for a man to understand a woman as I said in Chinese we say that woman's heart is like the needle in the bottom of the sea it's very hard to find because women have feelings whenever the guy doesn't relate to her or express his feeling or respond to her and the guy is not used to understanding feelings men don't understand feelings easily they don't express feeling easily so the women need to guide him 
to un to help him to understand her, help him to communicate with her. Instead of being angry, then the relationship will be uh, could be affected. Now, very often couples have problem not because of serious problem, just because they cannot handle little problems. Okay, twenty. There should be training on how to communicate with the dating partner about different issues. So they should learn to communicate about biblical values. So the Bible talks about giving, offering. Talk about forgiving people. Talk about uh, honoring our parents. Talk about evangelism. Talk about having a peaceful heart. How can we do that? So in dating, people should talk about things like this. Biblical teachings. How do we view different teachings? And self-image. What do you think about yourself? Do you, are you happy with yourself? Do you like yourself? Do you think you can do great things for God? Do you th have you been doing great things for God? And what are some things that would prevent you from doing great things for God? What do you think about yourself? And how to manage our thinking emotions? So they can talk about how can we be more positive? How can we talk positively and be nice to each other? And also, uh, how to obey God? Should we, should we not tell lies at all? Now we should all not tell any lie. But many Christians tell lies, so they sh they should discuss this. Should we read the Bible? How should we read the Bible? Can we understand the Bible? And can we? Uh, do evangelism and worshiping God. What do you think about worshiping God? What did you experience when you worship God? How did you worship God from your heart? And how to serve God? What have you? Uh, do you want to serve God more in the future? Chastity before marriage. That means having uh, no premarital sex, sexually pure. So what do you think about that? Should we? And so the first thing when they're dating, they should talk about this so that they won't be having intimate body contact and then having sex and and then they would not have time to talk about all these things they would just have sex and then they talk about how to you know get married and then the man doesn't want to get married or about the child and so they're all kind of problem and evangelism and purpose in life what do you want to do in your life and facing temptation when you face temptation when you face, see another beautiful girl what do you do when you see a handsome guy, what do you do? If you are tempted by the person, what do you do? And then in-law relationship, how can, how can I relate to your parents? How can you relate to my parents? And my parents have this problem, they have this way of talking. So how can you relate to them? And then uh, how about your parents? How, how are they? How can I relate to them? And then uh, raising babies. Do you want babies? And then do you want, uh, how do you want to raise the babies? What is, what are most important in raising babies? And building a godly and cozy family. How can we have a godly family? How can we have family worship? How can we have a warm, comfortable family? Cozy is a warm, comfortable family. Now we should all enjoy life, enjoy God, and enjoy our marriage. Because you know, the Bible says rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord means we are happy. We should be happy because of the Lord. And we should be happy with what God has given us. And, and enjoy our life, our, our wife. You know, the Proverbs talk about that. And to enjoy our wife and make our wife happy. So we should enjoy life. How, what do you think about enjoying life? So these are issues that people are trained to talk about. So that they know each other. And then if any problems come up, how do we handle it? So there should be training on how to share with friends and dating partner about different aspects of oneself and responding uh, to the life of one's dating partner. Okay, So we should learn to share with friends, with people, and with our dating partner about ourselves, different aspects of our life. Now. You notice when in my teaching, I share about my own life. I share about how I uh, relate to my wife, how I, my wife is supportive of me, and also how I handle, manage my emotions. So I, I share about my real life. So we need to learn to, first we 
manage our life we are happy with our life and then we are happy to share with people now when we fail we also be willing to share with people like in the past I did not handle my sins like now in the past I let sins uh, come into my life but now I want to be careful not to sin because I know that sins are very destructive so we need to learn to share about different aspects of our life now many people preach and they never talk about their life they talk about just concepts or ter terms they would just say praise uh, they would just say praise God God is good God is good and or uh, 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 anointing anointing God is good anointing is powerful anointing will change you anointing will do all this it's uh, it's uh, talking about terms without real feelings with without real experiences without real application to our life so we want to be able to talk about real experiences of us how to apply this and how it benefits us how I manage it how I use it so that people can sense what is in our life so people should learn to be able to share about themselves but some people don't want to share about themselves because their life is full of garbage they don't know how to manage their life so they are not happy about their life that way they need to work on their life so that they are happy to share about their life so people sh have to build up their life before they can date and have marriage it's very important that build people build up their life before they date or have marriage if they don't build up their life and then in a marriage they will suffer a lot and then respond to the life of one's dating partner so we share ourselves and then the other person will respond to us and when the other person share will respond to them so we learn to re share what is in our heart what are our feelings when we face failure how how do we feel how do we face it we want to be able to share with our spouse about our failures about things that we fail in how we felt about it and how we handle it so that we can face it together so couples should be supportive of each other and we can face problem together that is a, a meaningful relationship that it will build up each other it's not just just for the good times it also for the difficult times that we can support each other there should be training on how to build up very strong supportive relationship with people that now some people never have close friends they don't have a close friendship with their spouse they don't have close friendship with anyone because they don't learn to care about people love people and be able to share about themselves and respond to the needs of the other person respond to the problems of the other person and face problems together and solve problems together then we build up a strong relationship now with me and my wife we really have a strong relationship I know how she feels and she knows how I feel and we face problem together and I understand her I don't force her to change I let her know my view and then I let her choose I don't force her to change uh, now even though something I have my way of thinking because we have different personalities uh, but I just tell her how I think and then it's up to her to choose for herself and then so she knows that I'm supportive of her and, and she's supportive of me she understands our differences and then we understand how we each one of us think that way we, are support, we understand each other very well okay so now we come to counseling two persons who are dating now just now we have finished talking about teaching a whole group the previous teach, uh, teaching are teaching the whole group uh, because if we date every teach everyone every one uh, uh, couple who are dating it takes a long time so we want to have teaching to the whole church uh, people who want to learn so that they learn it but then some people before marriage everyone before marriage the pastor should at least counsel them when they're dating and then when they are um, in the process of getting married so there should be dating counseling and premarital counseling uh, and then but as, uh, and then especially when they have problems when we should 
tell our people if their problem they should come to a pastor or the, to a counselor for help so that we can help them if we don't help them what happens is they will suffer and they will have spiritual problem and you talk to them why do you have spiritual problem they won't tell you because we have not been caring about them but if we care about them and then they have marriage problem we can help them to overcome the marriage problem and then they can become strong Christians if they have continual marriage problem they won't be become strong Christians no matter how much you disciple them train them they still won't become strong Christians because they have problem in their marriage so when two persons come for dating counseling we can first educate them about the things we have talked about in the last session the last session is the education that it should be uh, taught to the whole group uh, to many uh, most of the people in the church and number two we can find out whether they have sought God's will in the relationship and how confirmed they are of God's will so that's very, very important now first are both of them Christians and then have they sought God's will are they sure that this is God's will that they will get married one day we we'll also find out how they relate to each other usually any relational and communication problem will reveal their life it will reveal their life uh, qualities and the condition of the relationship so if they argue a lot it shows that they have problem if they disagree a lot if they cannot communicate peacefully that means they have problem so all this shows a problem now so everyone watching this video you can examine your life do I have problem with my wife with the my dating partner if we have problem that means there is something we need to handle now sometimes people will say it's not my problem it's only his or her problem it's the other person's problem but we need to think about it is it only their problem do we have problems too usually a problem of two persons usually both persons have problems so we we need to learn to uh, handle our problems and if you have problems you find it hard to handle you can send in the questions to me okay now we can find out whether they have sought God's will in the relationship and how confirmed they are and then any relational problem communication problem re reveal their life qualities some people are very negative some people are very angry some people are very depressed so it will show their life qualities and the condition of their relationship then the counselor can counsel them in a way similar to doing marriage counseling uh, we, we won't go through that we went through that last time and counseling two persons who are dating we can also explain how to communi communicate with words of grace and words of the law and ask them to talk to each other in a gentle way about a problem they have faced in the next three pages this method is explained more fully so just like in marriage counseling I will let them handle uh, some of the problems they choose a problem they talk in a gentle way but first we explain the words of grace and uh, gentle words of the law how to communicate gently with the other person without accusing and then they practice it by talking about one of the problems how to manage it okay so the counselor has to be very familiar with the words of grace and the words of the law and accusation so he know what is words of grace that oh I'm happy to communicate with you I'm happy to have you I'm thankful for you you are very nice to me you have been doing good things to me these are words of grace and I'm happy to be supportive of you I'm happy to do anything for you so these are words of grace and then words of the law is and then we guide them uh, how can we solve this problem we have this problem do you think it's a problem what can we do about it S and then accusation he knows when one person is saying to the other person oh you can never do it it's no use you have mistreated me all these years you're always lousy so we uh, whenever we hear any words like this we know that is ac accusation and then we can ask the person what when you say that what do you think the other person will feel do you think it will help the situation do you think it will solve the problem so we need to understand that there are positive ways and gentle ways to communicate and it will solve the problem better instead of yelling at each other so many people have believe that when there are problems they have to yell at each other that 
doesn't solve problem it only makes the problems worse two when couples communicate they really accuse they easily accuse each other they don't realize that this hurt the marriage with time and it's hard for the marriage to re to recover when they continue to accuse each other so many people accuse each other and they didn't realize that it's very destructive and it will hurt it will hurt the relationship so people need to be sensitive to words of accusation and instead they will use words of guidance guiding the person how can we solve the problem and what are positive ways of communication and three whenever one person accuses or despises the other person the counselor can say how do you think what you just said can affect your spouse your the other person or your dating partner does it make him feel happy or despised how can you say this in a gentle way so we we we, uh, we stop them and say okay what do you think about what you just said is it does it make him feel good does it make him feel respected four whenever one person says something that builds up the relationship the counselor can applaud him and say this is wonderful you said that it's wonderful and also ask the spouse to applaud him and ask the spouse or the dating partner to say wow you're wonderful it's wonderful wonderful that you said that and he can respond by saying thank you by saying ing thank you the counselor can ask the spouse when he says something nice to you like that how do you feel so ask them how do you feel when he says something nice to you and then if he says he feels good the counselor can encourage them to talk like that all the time so if he's talk like that how do you feel you feel good then you can tell him I feel very happy when you talk like that I feel very happy when you listen to me I feel very happy when you respond to me five the purpose of the practice is to help them to be treating each other nicely all the time then the marriage can be built up so they learn to treat each other at each other nicely if they don't treat each other nicely the marriage cannot be built up the relationship cannot be built up and some people will say it's too hard to talk gently like that and we can say this is what the Bible teaches us Colossians 4 6 let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one so the Bible teaches us to that our speech would be with grace and Proverbs 25 15 by long forbearance a ruler is persuaded and a gentle tongue breaks a bone so a gentle person can change a ruler and but speaking the truth in love in Ephesians 4 15 so we want to speak the truth in love okay and then let me see how much I have here okay this is the last page if they can resolve the problems with positive words then the counselor can applaud them if they cannot the counselor can use different methods to help them if they cannot resolve their problems eventually the counselor can confront them and ask them to find out if it is God's will for them to be together so if they are both angry they're both unhappy and they cannot resolve the problem we'll find out why what is the problem so can you listen to your dating partner gently can you respond to him with positive words and he says I cannot I cannot it's my habit of talking so if a person insists on his way and doesn't change then what happens is it will affect this future marriage so then he's not suitable for marriage so we should let people know that people should be prepared to love and listen to their person and care about their person and say words gently in order to build the, uh, the relationship if he doesn't do that then they should consider whether they are suitable for each other and five the counselor should also ask them about if they have intimate body contact ask them uh, you don't need the word about here ask them if they have intimate body contact and if they have any sex if they have the counselor has to find ways to counsel them to do the right thing so they if they have sex they should stop seeing each other they should only talk on the phone to build up the relationship and not to see each other if they see each other it has to be in public that they have to agree to that uh, if not then they are falling into more and more serious sins so so we should counsel people and we should from time to time if uh, there are a number of young people in the church which from time to time we should warn people about premarital sex 
And also, we want people want to want to warn people about masturbation because masturbation will all, you know, will lead to fantasy. Uh, now, some people say it's too hard not to masturbate, but when we, when we have a peaceful relationship with God, when we enjoy God, God's presence will change us. Think about it. Did Jesus masturbate? He did not. You know, and because with the relationship with God the Father, He has satisfaction. He doesn't depend on masturbation. So, and I pray that we all learn to live in God, to have peace in Him, that we don't depend on s masturbation. That means self-stimulation uh, for a sexual pleasure. So to, we, we want to handle our life so that we live in holiness. And then number six, after counseling them, the counselor can tell them their strengths and the problem and, tell, and help them to find God's will for the relationship. So if they have serious problem, then the pastor can, should ask them to reconsider uh, because it will affect the whole future. But some people, they will still get married even though we advise them. Uh, then we still advise them, we encourage them, but we cannot stop them. But we want to tell them that it can create big problem for you in the future. And that means you. Uh, it's better that you wait, at least you wait. If you don't want to stop the relationship, at least you wait and then try to find ways to build up the relationship. Okay, now uh, some questions. If you have more questions, you can send to me in the leaders group. Can a single person serve God genuinely? Yes, of course. If he has peace in God, if he enjoys God, if he has a peaceful heart, then he doesn't have to need, have to depend on sex. Like Paul was single and then he served God genuinely. So uh, Paul said that, you know, it's in the scripture, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, that when a woman or a man is uh, single, that he can serve God with a more uh, pure heart. Two, number the, what are the major things to base on while selecting a partner? So we want to have the peace of God. The peace of God will guide us. And also how we relate. And the maturity of the other person. The quality of the other person. Uh, if the person is spiritually immature, or uh, emotionally immature, then we will want to reconsider. So we, we want to consider the, the whole person and us and how we match, whether we match, whether we, uh, you know, that we can, uh, you know, that our life will go a, a similar direction, that we can support each other. So basically, first to hear from God and to have the peace from God and then how we relate and the qualities of both person whether uh, it's uh, suitable for the two persons to be together and then the conflicts how they resolve the conflict also will show whether they are suitable together if they cannot resolve the, pro uh, the conflicts that means there's some problem some insist to have sex before marriage to prove normality of his or her partner uh, is it in order uh, that's against the scripture. Sex is only in the in the marriage, and so we don't, you know, if to prove. So if if someone says, oh, okay, well, he's not sexually capable, he's not sexually normal, then we should not get ma married, because in marriage, the most important thing is not sex. The most important thing is the unity in Jesus Christ. It's not sex. And then when a person says, I want to test the other person, that means if he finds a person not satisfying him, then he will test another person. Now also, does he test and see if the person is uh, fertile, that he can have a child, she, he, she or she can have a child. And then once you have a child, you have no turning back. So we don't test with sexual behave, uh, relationship. And that's against the Bible. You know, because marriage is for two persons, that the two persons are united in one. That we just showed you the passage before, that even when a person is united with a, a harlot, with a prostitute, he's already one with her in 
in the body. So we don't want to have one with a person unless you have, we have marriage. So how, how can I pull out a relationship successfully after I have discovered that my partner is cheating on me? Now, if a person cheat on us, then we'll... Now, if it's, is it dating relationship or is it marriage? If it's a dating relationship, we want to find out first what happened, why it happened. Uh, did it happen after we start to date or before? And how is the relationship with the other person? So we want to find out if the person is repentant and is willing to work on the relationship. And if he's not repentant, then we can say no. We can, uh, you know, ask the pastor to pray for us that we can uh, separate, uh, we can quit the relationship in peace. So basically, if with a firm decision, if this person is not suitable for marriage, then we have to say no definitely. Now, if the person is repentant and this person is willing to accept the person who is repentant, it is his choice. But he should first find out if the person is really repentant. If the person is really repentant and he's willing to to accept the person, that at least he would take some time to find out if the person is really, is, is he cheating anymore. If he's cheating more, then the relationship should stop. We should not think that marriage is a must. Marriage is not a must. Paul has said that very clearly. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Marriage is not a must. Now the the motivation for me to give this teaching is that I realize that there are many relationships that has a lot of problems that has uh, there are many Christians, even Christians who have sexual problems, who have a uh, problem of fornication uh, and and so I think that it's very important for us to have this uh, teaching on about dating. Uh, counseling and dating teaching so that will prevent this for the church and we teach the people that this would destroy the church affect the church okay let me see uh, uh, the other question and, uh, and someone says I believe servants you are enjoying the teachings on how people should uh, I guess uh, live out God's will in dating Many young boys really mess up. They don't anticipate the process in the right manner. So it's true that many guys just want to have sex and then they just don't care. So this is very important for them to understand. And the Bible also warns that all the sins are outside of our body except for uh, adultery. It, it's on our body. So when we have adultery and our body is the temple of Christ. So if we have uh, sexual sins it will affect a whole person okay and then uh, I see more questions now let me, let me open this up and then see it okay questions uh, you have teenagers who want to get married yet you have sought us not to rush if these teenagers are wise not to rush they shift to another church what do I do as the pastor? Now, if they want to rush and get married and go to another church, that means they are not sincere Christians. Now, that's another question. How do we motivate people to stay in our church? We motivate people to stay in our church by our teaching, by our goals in the church. If we have teachings that, are, that people are benefited from and they have spiritual care that they are benefited from, benefited from and they grow in a church then they want to stay in a church they see that this church is good that will help them spiritually so we need to build up our relationship with God and our ability to serve God so that people are attracted to the church and stay in the church if they would go away and get married there that means they just want to get married they just want to follow the, the desire instead of following God so we want to uh, be able to build up the church with goals 
that we give people goals that we want to uh, like we want to have mission work or we want to change people's life we want to raise up people to serve God we want to raise up servants of God we want to raise up soldiers of God so that we are prepared for the end time and also we want to have a church of love that people love each other and care for each other and build up each other and uh, have really care for each other it's not just a pastor preaching but everyone learns the way of life of a Christian of a real Christian and care for each other and and build up each other and then people are attracted to churches like that then they won't go away just because they want to get married and then they we want to tell them we don't we're not saying you don't get married we're just saying we want to do it for your own sake when you uh, wait and find out if you're suitable it's better than you rush into a marriage and then uh, have problems now I want to say this many people before the marriage, they want to rush into marriage. They want to rush to have sex because they think that sex and marriage will solve the problem. They don't. Sex and marriage will create more problems instead of solving problems. We need to solve our problems and then enter marriage and then have sex, not the reverse. So people understand that this will affect, so we need to educate them from childhood it's important to build up a strong family strong relationship that uh, we see some strong relationship and we want to have an example that we want to show people that we ourselves live our teaching that we have a good relationship with our wife and husband and then we people see that we enjoy our relationship we enjoy our ministry together then they are attracted to the church okay and then let me see more questions down below can I date a girl who gave birth while still at her parents home if yes is that girl faithful now I don't understand can I date a girl who gave birth while still at her parents you know how how did he I mean I mean do, do you mean that she had another relationship and then she and then she uh, gave birth to a child already before she got married now I so if a person has given birth to a child has already had premarital premarital sex and have a baby already according to the Bible she's already an adulteress and uh, now if someone wants to forgive her and she is repentant and want to marry her uh, it's fine in a sense that uh, it's actually a, according to the Bible the perfect way is that adulterers and adulterers should not get married again but for many people if they don't get married they have more problem they might commit adultery again and again then it's better to prevent that so the lesser of two evils is for them to get married in that sense and if the person is willing now but for pastors it's a different story now some denomination for instance the assemblies of God doesn't allow the pastors to marry a, uh, a divorcee or someone who has you know who has been uh, you know who have uh, committed adultery that a pastor is not allowed to marry a person who has committed adultery so uh, for pastors that they should have a high standard of marrying someone only who is uh, you know who is a virgin or if the husband has died if the husband has died then the wife can still marry a pastor and so but he cannot marry an adulteress how can you advise someone who dates and a partner de deserts him or every time he dates or before they get married okay I answered the questions already so that means that person has problem all the time with relating to people then he should work on the relationship so that uh, he's suitable for marriage okay and uh, okay so you can send me more questions and then I can answer your questions here uh, even after the session uh, 
I've seen that in many countries people live a life of fornication and this opens the way for the attack of Satan and then many Christians are very weak many Christians are very weak because they have sex easily so I pray that we all repent of the sins and then ask God to forgive us and treasure our life now I have four motivations to to have a, a holy life first God loves us God is very precious God loves us very much second we are very precious number three if we love God and obey God our life will go to a high level and God will bless our life so it's uh, worthy for us to love God and obey God and live a holy life and then number four if we sin and we don't obey God there will be serious consequences even when we repent there are still consequences that we have to bear the consequence like David even though he you know he repented but he still was punished for his sins of adultery and committing murder but he still has to bear the consequence so sins do have consequences so we want to follow God totally that will benefit from that some people want to rush into sex or rush into marriage they will suffer after that for a long long time but if we wait patiently for God we we'll enjoy a relationship more if we grow up to be more mature we'll enjoy a relationship more you can we can motivate people like that do you want to enjoy life more or do you want to rush you want to tell people people rush into suffering and then they want to come out many people rush into suffering when they rush into sex and marriage we don't want to rush into sex or marriage we want to seek God's will patiently and then make sure that the two persons are suitable for each other and are chosen by God and then they will enjoy the life more and when they can love each other so many marriages I saw that is they're not enjoying God they're, they're not enjoying each other they are uh, being tortured they are suffering in the relationship okay we we'll close of the prayer dear Heavenly Father we praise you and thank you that you have created marriage that we can have marriage that is pleasing to you and that will bless our life but we've seen that many marriages have problems and many people who are dating have problems because many people follow the ways of the world and have premarital sex and have sex with people easily Lord forgive us and help us to repent of our sin and follow you faithfully and then we when we follow you faithfully we'll be blessed by God we'll be having all kinds of blessing and will enjoy you more and enjoy our life and enjoy our ministry Lord help us to love you more and honor you and follow you and help us to clean the church of immortal, Im, uh, immoralities of, uh, of fornication and adultery oh,